All right, hello guys, Grim Reaper here, back with another Detroit Become Human uh, episode. This is part two. Um, so we're going to start off where we left off yesterday, where we were introduced to three distinguished, uh, distinct uh, characters. Uh, they were uh, Connor, then Marcus, and then Kara, right? So we'll be continuing the stories today and see what happens. Let's go. It's gonna be exciting to see uh, what the stories will lead to. And of course the choices that we make will determine the outcome of those characters. We need to be careful about that. All right, so we're gonna start off with Marcus here. And this is the owner's home that Marcus is walking into, that you can see here. And he has uh, yeah, an automated door, sensors and everything, detected Marcus and uh, let him in. We have this uh, object, this Bellini paint, shop item that you know there's some paint item for the owner so i'm going to deposit the package here yeah looking good all right i'm gonna put down this item here this color all right package collected deposit package now take care of carl wake carl upstairs but before i do that let me look around for a bit. What do you know? A mechanical bird. An android bird, I guess. Alright. Wow. Future, right? Yeah, stuff of the future. <laughs> Instead of having real birds, we have artificial android birds. Cool and scary at the same time. We have a zebra pelt, probably not real, just a made one, made up one. I like the whole automated doors, really nice. Uh, I know I have to like go to upstairs, so I will explore this area a bit later, I guess. Yeah, I'll just explore this area later. Let's first wake Carl, our owner, up. The place is very elegant, very sophisticated, you know, this is a Bangalore, looks really posh, pristine, clean, and he's an artist from what he can, you know, uh, gather from our information so far. Yeah, he has a passion for art. He's a collector probably, as well. Um... Yeah, we have a massive uh, like a, like a giraffe statue here, lots of books, more paintings, oh we have a decorative wall, a ceiling, very nice. We have a piano, a grand piano downstairs, we may be able to play that later, you can watch from this window here, wow. You can actually watch the the uh, garden area outside. Looks like we have a pool. Hmm. Not really a pool, but like a, what do you call them? It's like a decorative like uh, lake, sort of. Small pond. All right. This is probably uh, his room. Carl's room. He's sleeping. Let's wake him up. Uh. Good morning, Carl. Good morning. It's 10 a.m. Mm. The weather is partly cloudy, 54 degrees, 80% humidity with a strong possibility of afternoon showers. It sounds like a good day to spend in bed. <laughs> I did At go to pick Minister up the paint that you ordered. Carl's medicine. Oh, yes, I've forgotten. That is the difference between you and me, right, Marcus? You never forget anything. 
Hmm. Ooh, look at that. More paintings. Let's uh, explore and observe and take in Carl's bedroom here. Lots of books, paintings, more paintings. Administer Carl's medicine. I'm guessing he's uh, unable to walk on his own. So he has to have a wheelchair. Okay. All right. Take him. Give him the medicine. Show me your arm, please, Carl. No. <laughs> Carl. Don't be a kid. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it's probably insulin. I just opened my eyes and I'm already gritting my teeth. <laughs> Humans are such a fragile machine. Mm. They break down so quickly. All this effort to keep them going. Right. Yeah. Hey. What happened to your clothes? Oh, it's nothing. Just some demonstrators in the street, Carl. What a bunch of idiots. Mm. They think they can stop progress by roughing up a few androids. I hope they didn't harm you. Oh, uh, no, no. It's fine. They just pushed me around, Carl. I'm fine. Mm. Okay. I'll take you to the bathroom now. Oh. Yeah, Carl seems like a very good owner and who understands the and sympathizes with androids, not like the other humans. Um, and Marcus is a good caretaker for Carl here, from what you can observe so far. He cares about uh, Carl, takes care of Carl, and uh, yeah. So far, so good. So, Carl woken up. Take Carl to Anything dining special table. special on the agenda today? Yes, there's the opening of your retrospective at the Museum of Modern Art. Mm. The gallery director left four messages asking to confirm your attendance. Hmm. I haven't decided yet. We'll see about that later. Okay. What else? Just your usual fan mail. I've already answered. Fan mail, huh? Mm, so we have Any that matters. No, Carl. I can call him if you like. No. No, I don't bother. Ha! Huh. Look at that. You don't even need anything else to take on the wheelchair here. This is like a, like a really advanced machine here that will just carry this wheelchair from Upstairs, downstairs, very conveniently. Really nice. We can actually use one of these things. I don't know if we have this thing in real life, but if we don't, this is a good idea to have, you know, a good thing to have. Um, all right. Let's take, where should I be going? Oh, dining table, okay. So the dining table. I'm starving. Here. Well, your breakfast is ready. Bacon and eggs, just the way you like them. Thank you, Marcus. You're welcome. Hmm. Nice. Let's serve him breakfast. Um, serve breakfast. I'm guessing it's here. The kitchen area. Wow. Holy shit, the kitchen looks really nice. The kitchen does look really nice. Holy shit, just look at this. Can we go outside? We cannot. I can look outside though. Like a garden area there on the outside. Yeah. A very big place here. The fridge. Some. What is this? It's a coffee maker. Yeah. Stove. And everything. Anyway, let's. Uh, and the. Uh, we have with us the chimney. Okay, that's the breakfast. All right. Hmm. Probably made it yourself. Very 
very nice. Looks very delicious. Oof. Thank you, Marcus. <laughs> Television. Nice. Good servings. Several Russian warships have taken position in the Baron's fleet since Saturday. And the Russian flag now flies over the ice. Marcus knows how to serve. Why don't you find some to do while I finish my breakfast? Sure. Mm. Okay, Carl. All right. Let me now get to, you know, I'll explore this area a bit, interact with uh, something. Mm. Books. So I can read the books. No, I can't. don't want to read books. I can play the piano. Play the piano, or can I sit here? I don't think I can. Wait, something here? No, it's not. It's nothing here. I could play the chess. You know what? I think I will. Oh, what is this? Okay. Okay, I just. Spin this uh, globe with there. I'll, I think I'll play the piano. I think I'll play the piano. I actually used to play piano at one point, so kind of resonates with me here. Hmm. Uh, enigmatic, intimate, hopeful, ballad, cock. Um, yes, go with intimate. Should I be playing this for? Okay. I think I'll like. Something has changed in the way you play. Oh? Sometimes I think you have more humanity than most humans. Is it? One day I won't be here to take care of you anymore. You'll have to protect yourself and make your choices. Mm. Decide who you are and want to become. This world doesn't like those who are different, Marcus. Don't let anyone tell you who you should be. Hmm. Good, good Let's advice. Go to the studio. Good advice. I mean, at the end of the day, we should be our own person, right? And take our own advice. I mean, we can ask others for advice, but we should be the one to consider if it's going to be appropriate for our own lifestyle or not. And we shouldn't let people tell you, tell us what to do. Right? That's all. That's how I feel. Um. Wait. So what am I going to be doing here? Okay. Hmm. All right, he's gonna be painting uh, with this uh, help of this machinery. Okay. Let's see where we left off. Hmm. Remove the sheet. Um. Right. Wow. Okay. It's a huge ass painting over here. Uh, he's probably drawing a portrait of someone here. So uh, he said to clean the studio, huh? All right, all right. So it's uh, 
do that. Like, and I guess they painter. So, wow. Okay, look at that. Look at our side. We can actually observe the uh, garden on the out. Holy crap! It's huge. It's a huge ass garden there. Damn. These guys are rich as fuck. <laughs> look at this. Absolutely phenomenal. Hmm. Very beautiful. Very pretty. All right. Oh, I was supposed to clean. Okay, never mind. <laughs> so, what's your verdict, Marcus? Uh, yeah, I like I, I, I like this one. I like this painting. Yes, there is something about it. Hmm. Something I can't quite defined. It's like... I guess I like it. Hmm. The truth is, I have nothing left to say anymore. Each day that goes by brings me closer to the end. I'm just an old man clinging to his brushes. Carl. But enough about me. Let's see if you have any talent. Hmm. Give it a try. Try painting something. Oh. Paint? But would I... Painting what? Anything you want. Give it a try. <sighs> well... <laughs> okay. Alright, Carl. I'll paint for you. Oh, what to paint? <laughs> That's gonna be the question. Find a subject to paint. Paint Carl's painting? I don't want to copy his painting. I don't know. It's his unique signature. Paint the statue over there, or paint the desk. Yeah, let's paint the desk. It's a bit messy, a bit chaotic, but also has some kind of like a pattern to it. Full of colors, full of uh, objects and stuff. It looks quite active. Energetic. So. Hmm. Uh. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, let's that check out this. perfect copy. <laughs> yeah. Of reality. Okay. But painting is not about replicating the world. It's about interpreting, improving on it, showing something you see. Hmm. Carl, I don't think I can do that. It's not in my program. I. Go on, go, try it. Grab that canvas. So he wants us to draw or paint something from scratch, from our imagination. Something creative, something that's not a copy of something. Do something for me. Close your eyes. Close Object. your eyes. Trust me. All right. Try I'll to trust you, Carl. Something that doesn't exist, something you've never seen. Mm. Now concentrate on how it makes you feel and let your hand drift across the canvas. All right. Using our imagination, using our creativity from and drawing something out of nothing. Uh, so I'm going to be drawing uh, identity, humanity, or I guess our own identity is important because we are an android, but we are not an android. We're supposed to be more than that, right? Uh, shit. Despair, doubt, prisoner? I guess a, a prisoner was... We are shackled by our rules and regulations for being an android, so that's how we feel. That we, can, we don't have the free will to think and do things for ourselves. So probably that's how Marcus feels, that's how we feel. We're a prisoner of our own body, of our own mind, for being an android. So let's just see what Marcus thinks about all this, how he interprets that word into his painting. Hmm, it should be fascinating. Let's 
let's see. Wow. Wow, actually, this is oh quite good. God. It's really good. Hey, Dad. Hmm. Your Leo. son? Leo? I didn't hear you come in. No, I was in the neighborhood. I thought I'd stop by. It's been a while, right? You all right? You don't look so good. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> hey, listen, uh, I need some cash, Dad. Again? What happened to the money I just gave you? Uh, well, <laughs> it just goes, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're on it again, aren't you? No. No, no, I swear, it's not that. <laughs> no, don't lie to me, Leo. What difference does it make? I just need some cash. That's oh, all. OK. Sorry. The answer is no. This is a grown ass what? guy why? asking money from his why. dad. It's so s <laughs> pathetic. Yeah. yeah, I think I do know why. <laughs> you'd rather you'd rather take care of your uh, plastic toy here than your own son, right? Tell me, Dad, what's what's it got that I don't? It's smarter, more obedient, not like me, right? Yo. But you know what? This thing is not your son. It's a fucking machine. Yo, Leo, that's chill. Enough. Get off Enough. me, you bitch. You don't care about anything except yourself and your goddamn paintings. You've never loved anyone. You never loved me, Dad. Yo, not cool. You never loved me. Yo, it, you don't ask money from your dad at this age. Come on, man. It, it's not about... If he doesn't give, want to give money, then he won't. It's not about love. You're being selfish. Money doesn't buy love. I mean, come on. You gotta be responsible for your own actions. And he already gave you money from before. Right? He, he, the car gave Leo money from before and he just probably spent it on drugs or some shit. So, you know, naturally, uh, Carl wouldn't want to give his son money so that he can destroy himself. Huh. Man. All right, so uh, these are the choices I, had to <clears throat> I made during my... This chapter here, 90% uh, completed. The painter arrived home, drop package, wake Carl up. I uh, activated the bird. All right. Uh, notice Marcus is close. Um, I played the piano, 41%. Okay, interesting. Um, oh, okay. So 6% were intimate while playing the piano, 80% were hopeful. Okay. All uh, right, so take across the studio. I copied a desk. Okay. Playing from heart. Uh, identity. Nice. I went with the majority of people here. 58% went with identity. Um, from their prisoner was 12%. 27% were uh, painting doubt. All right. And that's it. All right, so uh, now, 11.21 p.m., we are with Connor. Let's go. I, I, Connor is one of my favorite characters in the game. He is the most favorite character in the game for me. He's cool. He has, he's chill. He's cool. He looks good. He looks very professional. All right, so no androids allowed. But we're going to enter anyways, because uh, <laughs> why not? All right, so everyone's... Uh, Giving me the stairs, because uh, Android and all. Find Lieutenant Anderson. So I'm gonna scan this whole bar area here and looking for Mr. I mean, Lieutenant Anderson, not Mr. Anderson, that's the Matrix. <laughs> uh, so that's the bar owner. Peterson, Jimmy, born on 2-1-2001, business owner, came record, none. Shit, I thought androids weren't allowed here. Yeah. Let's look at this guy here. Mismatch, Myers, Derek, security guard, came record, none. It's your problem. 
Report you, sir. Uh, Gray Christopher, unemployed, criminal records, uh, driving under influence, DUI. Gonna buy me a drink? What about him? What about you? Ha uh, Johan Kim, delivery driver, currently unemployed, domestic abuse as his criminal record. Okay, man. We can actually like scan through everyone and see their criminal records and other information. Quite scary, but quite interesting and fascinating at the same time. But he's an Android. He has criminal database of all the other uh, all people. Because like he's also a detective, sort of, working with the police. Okay, so uh, uh, Dempsey Edward administrator criminal record is none you sir graham jonah unemployed no criminal records whatsoever so you're probably gonna be this guy sitting here very uh remote very uh glooming yep that's him lieutenant anderson hank born on nine six 1985 police lieutenant no criminal records whatsoever but before i go talk to him, let me first explore the bar and scan the other people here just for my curiosity um we have here mcclay samuel uh docker no criminal records and the last two guys here are uh, Ward Dennis, accountant, currently unemployed, and narcotics supplier. Oh, okay. Um, Robert Chris, unemployed, no criminal records. Let's go to the store here. Uh, check ourselves out, because, yeah. You're looking slick. Very nice. Um, what else is here? I mean, why am I checking this toilet here? Thirty-one percent unemployment rate. When will it stop? Well, as long as the androids are around, I don't think it's gonna stop, and it's going to increase rapidly, as I can tell from current deposition of. The way androids are being handled uh, to do human jobs. Anyway, let's talk to and Mr. Lieutenant Anderson. Lieutenant Anderson. My name is Connor. I'm the android sent by Cyberlife. I looked for you at the station, but nobody knew where you were. They said you were probably having a drink nearby. I was lucky to find you at the fifth bar. Fifth <laughs> bar? So you checked oh, four yeah. other bars? <laughs> you were assigned a case early this evening. A homicide involving a Cyberlife android. In accordance with procedure, the company has allocated a specialized model to assist investigators. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't need any assistance. Especially not from a plastic asshole like you. <laughs> so just be a good little robot and get the fuck out of here. Okay. Uh, um, understanding? I understand that some people are not comfortable in the presence of androids, but I, I am perfectly comfortable. <laughs> Now back off before I crush you like an empty beer can. <laughs> I'm pissing him off, kinda. I will res reason with him. Listen, I think you should stop drinking and come with me. It'll make life easier for both of us. <laughs> He's like, fuck off, he doesn't give a fuck. Uh, let me buy him another drink, just to get on his good you know side. What? I'll buy you one for the road. Yeah, let's, let's, what do you say? let's do that. Bartender, the same again, please. <laughs> See that gym wonders of technology. Make it a double. Hmm. <laughs> I think uh, I got to the tension now. <sighs> Did you say homicide? Hmm. There we go. <laughs> See, you gotta be political with your answers. Get on his good side and you know, just talk some reasons into him and then... Yeah. That's good. 
and uh, he's just blasting some rock music. Cause you wait here. Why not? It won't be long. He's a rebel, kind of. Um, I will be patient. Whatever you say, Lieutenant. Fucking name, whatever I say. <laughs> uh, conflicting orders, selecting priority. Oh, so I need to follow Lieutenant Anderson, I guess. So, uh, <laughs> Josh Douglas from Channel 16. Can you confirm that this is a homicide? I'm not confirming anything. Oh. So Detroit ambulance. So uh, there's a homicide going on. Two, two androids here. Interesting. Wow, oh, okay. Look at this. This is a whole crime scene right here. Wow. Just look at this. There's a reporter here. And uh well. typical DPG, they don't tell us shit. Man, this graphics man, the visuals are amazing. Look at this. And I'm gonna go in. Androids are not permitted beyond this point. It's with me. Alright. Yep, we can go in now. You stay in the car, didn't you understand? Um, Your order contradicted my instructions, Lieutenant. <laughs> exactly. You don't talk, you don't touch anything, and you stay out of my way. Got it? Got, Got it. <laughs> Evening, Hank. We were starting to think you weren't going to show. Yeah, that was the plan till this asshole found me. <laughs> so, you got yourself an android, huh? Oh, very funny. Just tell me what happened. We had a call around 8 from the landlord. The lieutenant hadn't paid his rent for a few months, so he thought he'd drop by, see what was going on. Hmm. That's when he found the body. Oh. All right, let's uh, go in and just. Oh, Jeez, that smell it was okay. even worse before we opened the windows. This looks like a pigsty. Look at the menace. Ortiz. And this is this body. He has a record for theft and aggravated assault. According to the neighbors, he was kind of a loner. Stayed inside most of the time. They hardly ever saw him. Wow, well, stayed he's in. Wasn't worth calling everybody out in the middle of the night. Could have waited till morning. I'd say he's been there for a good three weeks. Yeah. No more when the coroner gets here. There's a kitchen knife over here. Probably the murder weapon. Any sign of a break in? Nope. The landlord said the front door was locked from the inside. All the windows were boarded up. The killer must have gone out the back way. What do we know about his android? Not much. I am alive. The neighbors confirmed he had one, but it wasn't here when we arrived. I, I gotta get some air. Make yourself at home. I'll be outside if you need me. Review evidence, zero out of ten. All right. So those yellow markers that you're seeing, I'll have to investigate every single point of these entries and see if any potential evidence is found so I can piece together what happened in this homicide scenario. Uh, firstly, I guess... Each letter is perfect. It's way too neat. No human rights like this. Hmm. Chris, was this written in the victim's blood? I would say so. We're taking samples for analysis. I am alive, so I'll sample it. Oh, Jesus, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> I'm analyzing the blood. I can check samples in real time. I'm sorry. I should have warned you. Oh, yeah. Okay, just don't put any more evidence in your mouth. You got it? <laughs> got it. Yeah. <sighs> Fucking hell, I can't believe this shit. All right, so DNA <laughs> analysis of uh, this guy here. So, uh, uh, so it's written in this victim's blood, I am alive, but let's analyze uh, this font here, this uh, writing. Regular letter font Cyber Life Sans. Cyber Life Sans, huh? So. Red ice. Huh. Seems our friend Carlos liked the party. Need to find out where the. Full analysis on the narcotics. Where the. Consider uh, it done, Lieutenant. His Android is. Hmm. Oh God, this guy. Fucking, he got wrecked. Uh, these are stab wounds, I believe. Yeah. 28 knife wounds. Holy shit. Internal bleeding, 28 stab wounds, deceased more than 19 days ago. So this guy's like rotten to the core. Like, in, can you imagine this fucking smell in here? Oof. 
God damn. This place is a mess already, so combine that with this decomposed body here. Ugh. God. Okay, so something's in his hand. Uh, fingerprints, database match, Ortiz Carlos, that's his name. Criminal record is theft and aggravated assault. Okay, so let's uh, keep looking, see if there's anything else I can find. Uh, so red eyes. I remember the red eyes from that Kara a chapter where this uh, that guy was taking red eyes, some kind of drunk. I forgot his name though. Uh, fuck, I forgot his name. But anyway, um, <clears throat> acetone, lithium, uh, what is it? Trichium, toluene, uh, hydrochloric acid. Or oh, Todd. The, the, the guy's name was Todd. Alright, so this is uh, right, Ortiz Carlos, five foot six, weigh, uh, weighing at 286.6 pounds, estimated time of death 11.30 p.m. Let's reconstruct this crime scene here, and uh, let's see what happened, just going back, all the f let's go back all the way from the beginning, oh, I cannot, okay, so, victim fell here, He was stabbed here. And there's a perpetrator. They came from the kitchen. Alright, so let's uh, play the whole thing. So, the perpetrator and victim had a fight, I'm guessing, in the kitchen area. And he was backing off. This uh, victim was backing off. He got stabbed once. He dropped down. Crawling in the living room area here, trying to back off from the uh, uh, perp, perp here. He got stabbed some more. That's another stab, I think. And there. Stabbed again, and again, and again, and again. And this 28 stabs in total. Oh man, very violent. He was killed very violently. So I'm guessing the, the uh, perp had some history with this victim. Didn't like him that much. That's why he got killed so violently. Okay. He was stabbed 28 times. Yeah. Seems like the killer really had it in for him. Exactly. All right, so... Hey Mike, uh, you finished taking samples there? Yeah, that's it. One out of 10, evidence selected. Let's look here. Red eyes. More red eyes. Okay. Victim used drugs. So probably was under the influence when something went down. Um, let's examine this piece here. This, oh, this is the knife. The weapon used by the perp. No fingerprints. Android involvement. Maybe the no fingerprint it could be the, the the perp wiped down the prints of this knife here and then dropped it down below on the ground. Who knows? Alright, let's look at this. Dried blood, DNA analysis. So we already checked with the other blood sample and found it's Ortiz Carlos's blood. So nothing else to see here. There's something over there. Wait, what was this thing? Not able to interact with that? Okay, now I can. What is this then? Eden's Club. Uh, Eden Club, come visit us. Okay. Nothing of importance, I believe, related to this case. This homicide. Uh, this room, I think I checked all the pieces of evidence. Uh, let's go to the kitchen. Keeping the car. You should have been there a half hour. On his Something way. on the wall. Dried blood. Okay, so uh, more of his blood. Uh, what's this? More of dried blood. I guess he stumbled upon, you know, on, this walls here as he was 
injured. No one wants to stay okay, so uh, some fight to. went on here. Let me see. It's dining room, kitchen slash dining room. Fingerprints, database, and so on. So uh, signs of a struggle. Yep. Seven evidence out of ten. Read this here. Okay, gossip weekly. It's just random magazine lying. Here. All right, so uh, maybe not random. Let's see. Uh, Judy Hewitt shows off her new beach bod. Android sex officially better. Sorry, ladies, but plastic can't be beat. Cannot be beat. Um, Mark Water and Nancy Reese step out together. All right, all right. Let's see if there's any something interesting here. Um, the result of our survey is in and it's official. 68% of men prefer sex with an android to a real woman. Okay. Okay, and with 52% uh, of men saying they have tried the experience at least once, that's a lot of android love to go around. Intriguing. There were a few reasons given for this preference, but we think we know the real reason. Androids don't want to talk about their feelings afterwards, so no attachment. Uh, this uh, story was sponsored by Eden Club. Discretion is our middle name. Wow. So Android sex, huh? I mean, we have sex dolls and everything. But this is uh, <laughs> taking it to the next level. Okay. I'm, I don't know if I'm down for this kind of thing. Maybe uh, if the future, you know, in the future, who knows? <laughs> I don't even know. Anyway, uh, new app plus headset allows for uh, live transition of all translation all languages. So tech addict, is your Android spying on you? Cyberlife could be using its Android to collect private information. Zero gravity subway to connect NYC to DC in 45 minutes. Um, so more and more experts are suggesting that Cyberlife uses its 120 million androids to record details of private conversations of its customers and sell them to trading partners. Even talked about, uh, ever talked about buying that new car while eating dinner with your partner? Cyberlife could be using, uh, could use that information for targeted advertising. The information gold mine doesn't stop there. Uh, everything from personal indiscretions to political affiliations could easily be extracted and potentially used for nefarious purposes. Uh, the spate of reports linking Warren's presidency to several lives uh, only depends such concerns. Several consumer rights organizations have requested that CyberLife disclose the information it gathers and who it sells that information to. But the company has always refused uh, request for a formal inquiry have gone and unanswered so far. So I'm guessing they're like the modern or the future version of Facebook where when you're logged into Facebook, if you have an active Facebook account and you Google search anything or you go to a random website to search for any particular item, Somehow, Facebook will detect that you've been to this site, you've searched for something in this particular area or this particular site, and they will, in fact, advertise those things uh, on your Facebook uh, feed. I don't know how they do that, but they do that every fucking time. Every single time that happens. They have some kind of tracking me mechanism. Partnering with Google and other places to do that. So it's kind of creepy. I get that. So Androids are going to be doing the same thing or possibly are doing the same thing here in the future. Okay. Unethical, obviously, but yeah. Um, something's outside. Can I go outside here? Yeah, that's what I'm exactly. I was suggesting to go outside here. So let's go outside. Um, hello? Can you move away, Hank? Okay, now. Uh, you need to move away from the door here, Hank. And you are not moving away from the door, so I cannot interact here. Anyway, let me just continue on. Here is the kitchen knife that was missing. Murder weapon taken from here. Mm hmm. Eight. 
the bat, the baseball bat. Let's look at the fingerprints, if it has any. Fingerprints, database match for T's Carlos, criminal records, theft, and aggravated assault. So this bat was used by Ortiz Carlos against probably the uh, deviant here, the, uh, the perpetrator here. So dent caused violent impact trace of Ethereum, blue blood. Yeah, so that's what I'm guessing. Like they had a fight with this android, probably. No, because the knife doesn't have any trace of fingerprint. And the font written "I am alive" was in Cyber Life Sans font. Um, some other irregularities. So I'm guessing a tussle between the owner and the android. Let's reconstruct the image here. See what happened. All right, so. Deviant took a knife. See, again, they've been having some uh, fight. Uh, Deviant was attacked, emotional shock. Okay. So this guy was probably under influence. Used red eyes. Went violent, postal on this uh, Deviant here. And uh, used his bat to beat down on this Deviant. As a result, he took an emotional shock, he was defending himself, but probably at some point he snapped. And Andrew's not supposed to snap or feel emotion or things like that, but he did. And at some point, he took it upon himself to defend uh, his life, his uh, self, and took the knife. Slashed him across the chest. He went through the knife here, and the and the victim dropped, crashed down with his uh, dinner table on the floor below. Dropped the bat down here, and that's how it ended up escalating from there. Okay, I need one more piece of evidence before I submit my report to Lieutenant. Anderson here. They can't go outside, so that sucks. This this could be some other evidence outside as well. Anyway, uh, let's look at this uh, bathroom here, real quick. What's under behind this curtain? Anything? Uh, lots of uh, obsessive writing on the on these tiles. It says something R A nine. R A nine R A nine. It's all jumbled up, but written with the same word or alphabets and uh, number. R A nine R A nine. Okay, so there's a statue at the ground here. It's any symbolic representation? Any significance here? I don't think so. Religious offering? Hmm. Hmm. Not sure. What this guy this deviant was uh, going for here I don't know but I think I got all the evidence and I'm going to now submit my findings to our, our guy right. yeah I think I'm done all done uh, yeah that, that's the magazine I already read so I need to like interact with that again uh, where is Anderson yeah there he is all right Let's talk to him. Lieutenant, I think I figured out what happened. Oh, yeah? Shoot, I'm all ears. Right. It all started... In the kitchen. In the kitchen. There are obvious signs of a struggle. Question is, what exactly happened here? I think the victim attacked the android the bat with the bat that lines up with the evidence go on the android stabbed the victim the victim stabbed the android the android stabbed the victim so the android was trying to defend itself right Okay, then what happened? Mm. The victim fled to... The living room? The, yep. 
the living room. Oof, more stab attacks. Damn, this guy went post. <laughs> he just snapped. This deviant snap, really. Damn. And he tried to get away from the android. Yeah. Alright, that makes sense. Hmm. The android murdered the victim. <sighs> With the knife, obviously. With the knife. Okay. Your theory's not totally ridiculous. Oof. But it doesn't tell us where the android went. Uh, yeah, that's the problem it here. It was damaged by the bat and lost some therium. The blue blood? Lost some what? Therium. You call it blue blood. Mm. It's the fluid that powers androids' bio components. Right. It evaporates after a few hours and becomes invisible to the naked eye. Oh. But I bet you can still see it, can't you? Correct. Yeah. <laughs> Connor is awesome. Connor is really awesome. All right, so now time to scan this area for blue blood, this Ethereum that uh, probably has been leaking from the Deviant, and as you can see, you can you can spot it right here, right here. Invisible to the naked eye, but I can see it as an android myself. I have that ability. So let me see where this leads. Some of them trails back to this dining room here, because that's the original spot. However, it also leads back here, near the bathroom. No, it does not, but it does go here somewhere. Let me see. No. <laughs> Close. No cigar. Um, it does go to the bathroom here though, let me see, yeah, yeah so it, it leads to the bathroom, but there is something to interact with here, let's see, let's see if there's something I can interact with here, so let's do that. Okay, so a ladder was used, so I'm um, guessing there's something he used. A ladder was used to climb up somewhere. Alright, so something up here. Ah! Okay, traces lead to the attic. Okay, so he's probably up there. Can I go up? Okay, let me talk to the lieutenant. Uh, actually, no, I need, I, need, I need to find a ladder. Can I just go up on my own? Find something to climb. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Can I use a chair? Yeah, yeah, I can, I can. Okay, nice. Hey, 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 what are you doing with that chair? I'm going to check something. Check something. <laughs> All right, let's 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 go. Let's do this. <sighs> Thing is hiding. It's probably hiding up there. Yeah. Hmm. Search attic. Right. Carefully and slowly approach. And, uh... Damn. This is a doll. All right. Oh, I see him. I see him. He's right there. He's right there. You don't have anywhere else to go. Surrender now. While you still have the chance. Right. Yep. There, there he is. There he is. If 
from the deviant. I was just defending myself. He was gonna kill me. I'm I mean, begging you. Don't tell him. That's not how it works. That's not how it works, buddy. It's here, Lieutenant! Oh, shit. Chris! Ben! Get your asses in here now! Well... Come on! I mean, whatever happens, right? Uh, guilty or innocent, I can't just let this slide. I'm a cop. I'm with the cops. I'm a deviant hunter myself. I can't just let this slide and hide you under this, uh, up, up this attic here. That's not in my prerogative. No, it's not in my programming. And you may, be, may as well be guilty. You may as well be innocent and defending yourself. We'll see after we investigate your crimes or the crimes of... I mean, you also committed a crime. So you have your crimes. So, yeah. All right. So in front of a bar, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, face scan customers. I did that. I buy him a drink. 74% of people have bought him like a... Uh, Lieutenant, the drink. Oh, good job. Spill bank drink. Ten percent. Holy shit! Someone actually did that. Okay, so uh, like nine, ten percent people. Examine Eden Club flyer. Nineteen percent. So most of us have already checked all of the evidence here. Because why not? Analyze the backyard. Read Android spy. Yeah. So this one is like most of them. We did that. There are some other options here I can use. Interesting, huh? I didn't use that. Okay, huh? Oh, I could have. There could have been another option. Hmm. Wow. I wonder what could have been the other option here. Anyway, ha! Uh, report to Lieutenant Anderson. Reconstruct the crime. Found the deviant. All right. Good. Back now to Kara's. Uh, character here. We're gonna talk to Kara. I mean, we're gonna play as Kara. And this is here Alice. This here is Todd, the fucking. Todd. Uh, <gasps> like raging guy. Unstable. Dinner is ready. Okay, serve food. So this is Kara once again. We are with Kara and let's see, there's uh, Alice at the dinner table. I'm going to serve food, so let's do that. Do we have anything to interact with? For now, uh, I, maybe I do have something to interact with here. What is this? Turn on all the lights. Let's talk to Kara. I mean, the uh, Alice. Can we do that? We cannot. She's reading something. And of course, uh, Todd is using his drug. The red eyes. <laughs> Pathetic. All right. So we have some noodles, some spaghetti, maybe, or some noodles. Uh, there wasn't much in the kitchen. I did what I could. Yeah, not much just in terms of dinner. I would call that dinner, but anyway. Um, let's pour the water and then serve the napkin. Let's pour it to Alice. Life's first. funny. I lost my job because of androids. Aha, uh -huh. I guess I see. need somebody to take care of this goddamn house. What do I do? I go out and hire Fucking android. What a joke. Uh, of course, androids are so fucking wonderful. They never fail. They never tired. They never sad. They're so fucking perfect. They ruin my fucking life. Chill. You need to chill, Todd. It is what it is, you know. I sympathize, but you can't. What's your fucking problem? Uh oh. 
Not the life you dreamed of, eh? Oh. Maybe you think this is easy. Maybe you think it's my fault we live in this fucking shithole. Yo, you need to chill, man. My fault your fucking mother took off. You should stop taking drugs, Todd. Sometimes you really scare me, Todd. Yo, you're a, you're being a psychopath here. Bitch took off without a word. Fucking whore walked out on me for a fucking account. Yo, what the, what the fuck, man? Dude, chill. Daddy, no. It's all your fucking fault. Oh, fucking motherfucker. Get back here. Come back here. Come back here right now. Yo, fucking. Dude, chill the fuck up. I need to I need to do something. Yes! I need to do something. Uh, I absolutely must do something here to protect the you know Alice from this bad this bastard. <sighs> okay. You stay there. Don't you dare fucking move. No, I'm not fucking Just listening to you, bastard. I'm 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 saving her. I am fucking saving her. I need to get her out of this fucking place. Or do something at least. Alright. So, um, right, so I'm trying to break my protocol here, I think. Because, like, you know, because uh, I'm an android, I'm not I'm supposed to like, obey human laws and what human tells me to do, but this particular instance, I need to, yeah, I think I broke out of my, of my protocols here and protect Alice, absolutely, let's fucking go. No time to waste. Reason with talk. I don't think this bastard's gonna be able to reason with. I'm going out. Yeah, I'm, I'm going out. And I have an idea here, cause like, I, you remember, there's this, there was a gun in this cabinet here. Yeah, I'm gonna be using that. I'm gonna be, well, let's just see what happens. Yo. Yo, fuck off! Get the fuck. Get the fuck off her. That's enough. Leave her alone. Yeah. You fucking leave her alone. Put down the gun and get the fuck out of here. That's an order. No. No. I want you to leave her alone. You want? What do you mean you want? What are you gonna do? You gonna shoot me? Is that it? Yeah, I will shoot you, bastard. Shoot a human. Uh -oh. oh shit! You seem to have a problem. Uh, I think we need to fix that. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh shit. Um. Watch out, Kara! Get the gun! Get the gun! Get the gun! Get the gun! Get the. Get the. Get the... Get the... Get the... Fucking gun! Get the fucking gun! Oh god! Okay. Huh. Stop, nope. Dad. Don't hurt her. Uh, no. Nope. Man, this is intense. Uh. Leave her alone. Yo. You do as I say. Nope. Get the gun! Get the gun! Yes. Wait! I think I shot her, right? I shot him? Yeah. There? Yeah, fucking... Okay. Fuck you. Well, fuck the guy. I don't... Fuck that guy. I don't fucking care. Shit, but... Uh... Okay, uh... Now, uh... Well, she's safe. That's all that matters at this point. I don't even fucking thinking about anything else right, right now. Let's get out of here, let's get out of here. Uh, yeah. We are, we, we are out. I don't care where you're going, just we are out. We don't want to be here any longer. Any second longer. Oh shit, that happened. <laughs> Okay, we're safe. She's safe. Aww. 
It's gonna be okay, Alice. Uh, I'm gonna take care of you. Don't worry. We'll find something, we'll figure out something else. At least, you know, you don't have to like take that abusive shit as your dad any longer. Holy shit. Alright, so, uh, well, that happened. And uh, let's see, so dinner's ready, wait on uh, Torrance. I fucking still can't believe I did that. Holy shit, man. Uh, Todd gets mad, breaks programming. Kara becomes a deviant, go upstairs. Get to Alice before Todd. I did that, I went as fast as I could. Uh, Gun sin uh, in a near home. Take the gun and get to Alice after Todd. Uh, wait. Oh, okay, this is another another playthrough. Okay, so uh, threaten with the gun. Defend Alice, eight one percent. Kara kill start, forty four percent. Interesting. Open uh, front door, run to the bus, and Kara shot Todd. Oh, okay. So if you're wondering, I did play through this game before, uh, I, but I took different choices. Uh, I was like exploring to see what other, what other options I could take and make, uh, but this, I didn't expect him to the, her to shoot at him. But holy shit! Uh, wow, that happened. <sighs> well, okay, but I, 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 I find it justified. It's, it's self-defense. It was like, like you remember, uh, Todd. He was so confrontational with uh, Alice and me as Kara, and she actually killed us. Like by kill, I mean broke us. You know, we, we broke our Android parts. So we had to be, uh, yeah, he had to be go back and repair us with uh, to an Android shop and everything. So he is abusive. Period. Um, I know like, you know, he lost his job and everything and his wife left her for an accountant. But that doesn't mean that his anger and everything, the frustration that he's feeling, he has to take it out on Alice, her daughter. That is not fair. You know, that's not something you, you, you get to do ever. Absolutely not. No matter what happens, you cannot just take that abuse to your children or your, you know, anyone else talk to a therapist talk to a friend talk to anyone just you know vent out in a positive way like in a, in a constructive way not in a destructive way like he was doing at this point so uh, what we were doing i find it justified because we had no other option he was going to kill us maybe he was going to kill or hurt severely hurt alice we don't want that to happen um so we just had to do what we had to do self-defense and everything although since we are an android, they're not supposed to kill anyone, let alone use a gun. We are now a deviant, and we're gonna be hunted by cops and uh, you know Connor. He's a deviant hunter himself, so yeah, we're gonna be hunted by them. So, uh, but that doesn't matter anymore. We have to like protect Alice more than anything else. That's our priority. So yeah, all right. Okay, so uh, I'm going to have to like uh, close out uh, this episode, this part here for Detroit Become Human. It's uh, uh, already a bit past one hour mark. So I don't want to like, you know, keep it around uh, one hour for each episode or each part. Uh, I will continue playing through the rest of the game tomorrow onwards as usual. So for now, I will close out. So thank you, everyone for watching and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.